Here we are in our example form 1040 using Lacert tax software to populate it. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also find the form 1040 related schedules and forms at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting out with the single filer, Mr. Anderson, no dependents. We got the 100,000 W-2 income, 12,950 on the standard deduction, getting us to the taxable income. 87,050. If we mirror that in our worksheet over here, 100,000 in our formula, standard deduction 12,950, 87,050. We have then the tax being calculated by the software on page two. There's the tax calculation, 15,000 withheld, gets us to the 226 here, and that's mirrored over here, 226. Now we're gonna focus on the other income. So back to page one, we're on the income line. We've been going into the schedule one, schedule one, and looking at the other income lines, remembering that basically the IRS says everything needs to be included in income unless we say otherwise. So if there's no other form for it, then likely you might need to include it in this other income schedule one line number eight. As you think about this line, note you want to be very careful about the types of incomes be very careful that might be subject to self-employment tax which is another big hit another big burden in which case you might have to report it on like a schedule c or something like that and those which are not subject to self-employment tax which in that case uh, you'd be more likely to have them over here on line number eight we're also going to be mindful of the fact that if we get a 1099, we probably need to put something somewhere that is equivalent or greater than the 1099 because the IRS has the 1099 and so we need to keep that in mind. So we went through a few of these in a prior presentation. Let's look at 8 uh, R down here. We'll just do a couple more. If you got a scholarship or fellowship grants are uh, not reported on a form W-2. So there's questions with regards to scholarships and, and fellowships in, in terms of now you've got money and it's kind of like free money. So you think it might be included in income because it's, it seems like a type of, of inflow, but it would also be one of those things you would expect the IRS might uh, exempt. So you might have, if you spend it in the proper way, be able to be exempt from it. So enter the amount of scholarship and fellowship grants not reported on W-2. However, if you were a degree candidate, include on uh, line eight are only the amounts you used for expenses other than tuition and course related expenses. So you might wanna make sure that you're spending the money, that your grant money or whatever in a way that's gonna be maximizing your benefits. And remember, there might be a difference between the definition of how you can expend your expenses here, which might be a little bit more stringent than possibly if you're looking at some of the education credits, like a hope or lifetime credit and trying to qualify there. So for example, amounts used for room, board and travel must be reported on line uh, 8R. Okay, so you would think that if obviously the tuition would be the, 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 the solid one, the solid bet there. So if it's on the W-2, then you would expect that it would already be included in the W-2 and, and therefore excluded from box one of that W-2. And so you, wouldn't, you would think you wouldn't have to do anything because your employer was the one that had to do it there. If not, then you might have to include it uh, here. And so I could say, you know, 15... Uh, thousand let's say and bring that over so now that's where it's going to populate and it'll go down here to the 15,000 and then populate to the form 1040 as we would expect and there's the 15,000 bringing in the taxable income up to 15 uh, 150 and so I won't go to the excel sheet because I think these are fairly straight straightforward uh, examples so there's one 